Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Fat Camp Artwork. I am Sean Reisner and it is very very cold out today and I hope you guys are having a good day. Uh, today I thought we would work on that barn picture. Uh, we would put the, you know, we've already put the base coat of the barn and tree in. I thought today we would go back through, do some more of the middle coats and top coats and we'll see what happens from there. If you guys are ready, let's do this. <laughs> Okay, so if you guys remember, uh, we put in our base coat for the tree, and barn as well. So uh, first thing we're going to do is kind of put the skeleton back into this tree. So this tree is going to need a trunk and some branches in it. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in for some white and stick that on the side there. And we're going to mix up a brown color. I got some uh, burnt sienna and some Van Dyke Brown and we're just going to kind of add some brown back into the white okay what we're going to do I'm going to load both sides and then I'm going to take one and I'm going to pull through some dark okay now with this we got to do, a, we have a dark side and a light side. We got to figure out what side our light's going to come from. And I'm right handed, so I'm thinking let's have our sunlight coming from the right. So this will kind of be our shadow side. Okay, so for that trunk, I'm going to put my highlight side to the, well, in this instance you're going to have shadow from the barn and stuff, so we're going to keep this part fairly dark in here so and I think on this one here we'll just uh, we're not looking for now we're going to pick up some dark go right back into some of that dark and we're going to pull from the bottom up and kind of blend that in Okay, I'm going to kind of stick with some of that dark color, I think. We're not really looking for a whole lot of detail in this part. This is just more of, uh, it's going to mostly be covered up. We're just kind of looking for some spots that will show through. Just reload the brush as you need to. And in my mind, I think it'll come together right about here. Notice how I'm keeping the highlight side to the right. And also, oops, don't do that. God. Okay, and anyway, <laughs> back to it. <laughs> We're just going to kind of touch some tops, make some uh, highlight parts in there. Uh, maybe there's more than one tree. Maybe this back here can be its own little tree or something. I don't know. We'll just put a trunk in it. Just kind of, uh, and you can come down in front of that mark. Because remember, this is the background part. The barn will cover up anything behind this tree. Try to be very loose with this. Maybe you can put like some little uh, sticks or something back in here that's really not too defined. Just 
Just kind of maybe pull some things out every once in a while there. Let's broaden this up. There we go. And let's bring that up. Okay. Again, reload. Um, you can even change your color up a little bit too. You could even put a little bit of a, you know, a little bit darker color to it. Uh, maybe just touch some spots. I'll tell you what, let's do this. Let's really define this part right up in here maybe. We'll just kind of tap that brush on the canvas. And, you know, we'll just kind of give it like some little individual branches. That's more of a thing you want to do towards the top. Um, you know, yeah, let's put a little line right there. Maybe that, maybe that stick comes out uh, further than the rest of it. I don't know. Who, uh, who knows why nature does what it does, you know? But just kind of build up the sticks and the branches. Yeah, it's looking good. Like maybe right back in here, maybe there's just a little something. I'll tell you what, for right now, let's go ahead and leave that, but there is one thing I do want to do. Uh, I'm gonna wipe my brush out. Just on a shop towel, uh, paper towel works, newspaper. Uh, old shirt, <laughs> whatever works. And I wanna just really hit that dirty brush back into some just some plain white. Let whatever color is in the bristles that remained in the bristles from wiping it out, just kinda of let that stain the white a little bit. We're gonna just have some more of a, like a very bright, solid white. And let's go back in here to this, we're gonna to stick to Okay. All right, don't ask me how I did it. <laughs> but I got a smudge of brown paint right here. Okay, that sky is dry. So what I'm gonna do to remove that is I'm gonna take a brush, I just grabbed a random one, dip it in a little uh, paint thinner, some turpentine. And since that base coat is, or the Sky Coat is dry. I can actually rub that turpentine on there and completely remove that brown spot and it won't affect anything on the bottom. So there's a good tip for you. As long as it's completely dry, give that a try. Okay, let's try this again, shall we? <laughs> a little highlight, like maybe the light's really coming through here. Ooh, right there especially. Ooh, okay. There we go. See, I'm just tapping that. But I'm remaining to this side of it. There we go. And then I'm just going to kind of flick some of that dark back into the white of the tree. There we go. I think that looks all right. I think I'm just going to go ahead and leave it like that for right now. Okay, so what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to take that same color and I'm going to thin it down with uh, some turpentine and I'm going to twist the brush and pull it out to give you know give the edges a, a very sharp pointed edge. And let's go back in here. Now you can start picking out, like right here, for example. You can really start deciding some branches. And you know, if you notice my hand kind of shakes, uh, the more of that you can do, the better.
you can spend a lot of time doing these little details like this. You know, practice them, and then when you get good, really start uh, focusing on doing a lot of things like this when you paint, because this is what's going to really separate your pictures from a lot of other paintings out there that don't have as much detail. These ones will sell better. They will um, be appreciated a lot more. All right, there we go. That step is done. All right, now that we have the, the skeleton of the tree in with highlights, shadows, and midtones, we're gonna go back through now and we're gonna start putting the leaves on top of the skeleton to sort of push the dark shape of the tree back as well as building uh, clumps of leaves on top of all the branches, the sticks, etc., etc. And so to do that, I'm going to mix up three different colors of a, a lighter green color. We're going to mix up a dark, light, and lightest. Let's go ahead and mix up just some uh, Van Dyke brown and some sap green. Let's see, we'll just kind of see what kind of a color we can get out of this. And then I'm going to, I want, to, I want it to be dulled a little bit. So in order to dull it, you can actually add even just a little hint of red. Red will kind of dull that naturally. Here we go. You'll kind of notice um, when I, I'm just ever just very gently touching the bristles to the canvas to get those effects. I'm just doing them here, but I'm just trying to keep them more to this side here, and I'm not trying to kill all the dark, dark areas. You can even come right outside like I just did here, outside that base, and just leave a little, you know, kind of like that even. It just kind of looks a little natural. And then I, try, I like to turn my brush when I'm painting. <clears throat> we'll kind of let that tree just kind of hang out for a little bit. We'll come back to that in a little bit. Uh, now I'm going to start kind of building on this here. And I'm thinking on this barn here, I think this one needs a, uh, like a brown roof, I'm thinking. So what we're going to do is add some uh, some burnt umber maybe just a smidgen of some Van Dyke brown in there and what we're gonna do with this I'm just thinking maybe We'll just kind of drag some of this color. Now I kind of like those uh, marbled effects in that roof. I think I'm going to try and leave those. I'm not going to over mix that because that'll be good texture.
and then just kind of let the paint run out of the brush a little bit. Let's put a little more in that. Maybe more of the white color, maybe. I used very little pressure on that just so the paint would kind of have that texture to it. What we're going to do now is uh, take that same color and we're going to load some just on the tips. And we're going to go back in here and we're going to touch just slightly above where I put that black line for the overhang. That's going to be the other side of the roof. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> if you want to, you could take some uh, darker colors even too. Uh, to go back and select some Van Dyke Brown, maybe a little black even. Start here at the bottom. And maybe drag in some dark colors. And I'm always following the angle of the roof. See, if your roof goes this way and you start painting like this, it's going to look weird to you. So always keep in mind the angle of the roof is going to be the most important. Alright, I think we're going to start putting some uh, color. Remember I said I wanted this to be a red barn, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up some of the red that we have. I'll put a smidge of yellow to it. And I'm going to add some, start adding a little bit of green into that. There we go. I kind of like that. So, same thing, we're just going to load our brush full. Now we can come up in here. See how I'm taking and just sort of dragging down? Not using a lot of pressure with the brush. And I'm going to start painting right over top of this. But see how I'm letting some of that, uh, that uh, base color kind of show through? All right, now let's go ahead and cut this off. We're going to go right up to this peak on this barn where the roof line is. We're going to fill it in. I just had that little dark line in there for a guideline. You'll see why I put that in there when we come back in a second. Okay, next thing, my liner brush again. Loaded the same way as the other one. I'm gonna start going back through. And uh, you know, like we had this line in here. And 
Okay. Now we have our shadow side. Mm -hmm. And since this side is sticking out further from the building, this will also get a shadow as well. So again, same color. We'll just go right up underneath. And we'll just drag down. We're just trying to put a little dark shadow where we know it hit. And then just kind of smooth it out and we'll just kind of drag in spots think about where your lights gonna hit it's not gonna hit so much underneath the eave you're gonna see it more along the lines of here and see how I'm just kind of taking and flicking spots see that one had kind of more of a yellow to it and that's fine too Kind of tone that one down a little bit. There we go. Sometimes you can finger paint too, that's all right. And don't be afraid to drag some of that dark down in here too. Those will later on be uh, boards that are missing. You can kind of see through it, things like that. And also down towards the bottom, this is something my grandmother kind of taught me about painting buildings when I was a kid, is to drag some of that dark up from the bottom of the building. And she always kind of said like buildings, uh, sometimes they get like flood damage and things like that and it kind of discolors the bottom a little bit and uh, you're not looking for nothing too particular on any of this really yet you're still just kind of focusing on highlights and shadows and texture will come as we go I kind of like the look of that dark here and there so I think I'm gonna just I'm gonna load that brush this angle brush to a chiseled edge again and we'll just touch certain spots where you think the uh, wood might be breaking away and we're just kind of thinking about uh, age weathering Here's a big piece of missing right here, maybe. We'll just kind of make a big... There we go. I don't know. You know, whatever happens.
All right, everyone, I think right now we're just gonna leave this as is. Um, as you can see, I've gotten you know a little bit more of the higher contrasting colors put back and forth. Basically, you're just taking, well, the trees, for example. Basically, what you're doing is you're taking your dark base color and shaping your tree. Then you're putting a mid-tone, a highlight, and then what I kind of like to do is take my dark color again and as you saw, maybe lightly tapping back in some of my highlights, uh, just to kind of bring a little texture back into it, um, kind of break up those solid shapes, et cetera, et cetera. And same with the barn work, it's just, you, you take your color and your light against dark, back and forth, back and forth, until you kind of get it where you want it. And I think what we'll do next time is we'll focus more on uh, maybe like uh, defining this eave a little more and we'll, we'll just focus more on details. Um, I thought the sliding door, we'd kind of make it rusty and kind of old and weather looking. And maybe kind of work on defining some of like the boards. Uh, maybe we'll paint some rocks in that foundation piece. Well, hopefully you guys are learning something from this here. If maybe you're just here to kind of watch and observe and, and, and hopefully you guys are enjoying yourselves doing that. If so, I really appreciate it. Subscribe to my channel and follow me. Uh, you know, hit that little bell. Ba -ding, and uh, <laughs> I tell you what, next time we'll focus more on the details and I'll be back here real soon. Okay, until then, you guys take care. God bless. Love you guys. around it. Do you want... That's, that's, that's my walls. <laughs>